guys, welcome back to my channel once again. As many of you know, I am Cindy Lumpkin, the LD Educator. I am a special education teacher and the founder of Triumph Transition Schools, where I work with young people who have learned disabilities such as dyslexia, ADHD, dyscalculia, and a host of other things. Generally, I try to take a more serious approach to my channel. However, I think the quarantine Quarantine is getting the best of me because I had a splendid idea in which I wanted to start talking a little bit more about famous people with dyslexia. No, not that famous list of old people that we know, but a whole new list of younger people or people that you had not heard of before. Well, a little idea popped in my head and then I kind of got silly. So I don't know if this video verges on the foolish <laughs> or just downright not a good idea for me, but it was kind of fun making it. I hope you enjoy it. It is actually filled with some really good information. So if you can get over the other stuff, you will be able to probably just crack a whole lot of jokes at me. But nevertheless, I enjoy making it and I hope you enjoy watching it. Hello guys and welcome. I am Cindy Lumpkin, the LD Educator, and this is our very first episode of Famous People with Dyslexia. On today's show, we will be talking with the famous actor and author. Let's get it up for James Vanderbilt. So James, before we jump right into this, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? My name is James Vanderbeek, and I'm a writer, actor, and producer, and I'm dyslexic. So James, being a person with dyslexia myself, it is always my goal to share wisdom with the younger generation so that hopefully they won't have the same hurdles or have to endure some of the same emotional scars that I did when I was growing up. Keeping in mind that you are a dyslexic, James, could you please tell us one thing that you would tell to your younger self? If I could say one thing to my younger self, it would be, have fun with it. You know you're not stupid, so don't ever believe for a second that you are. And all of that work that you're gonna have to do, all that mental gymnastics that you're gonna have to do to, to make the connections that other people seem to make effortlessly, that's gonna wake up other parts of your brain. They're gonna allow you to have ideas they're gonna, they're gonna seem crazy to other people, but those ideas are gonna be what sets you apart. There's a reason a lot of other creative people are dyslexic. That little glitch in your brain is actually your best friend. So whenever it gets in your way or you realize you've made a mistake, laugh. Laugh because that's what kind of sets you apart and you're gonna be grateful for it, I guarantee you. James, recently I discovered you on Instagram where you shared a technique for learning the numbers, where particularly a technique for people who have dyslexia and who have a hard time learning to write them in which direction the nine and the seven all goes. And I think it was absolutely brilliant. Let's play the footage. Okay, so one stands there alone. Two is kind of like, oh my gosh, I'm the first number out. One, I'm just going to look at you. Also, because three is trying to eat me. Four is just sitting there like, chill, yo, check out my boy five. Five is like, we're halfway to ten. My hat is pointed upwards, baby. And six is like, I'm not really into that. I'm really into seven. And seven's peering over at six like, what's up? Those two are in like their own little love thing. Six is open to seven. Seven's right there. Eight is just like, I need nobody. I am infinite. And nine is peering over eight. Like, six, you're my soulmate. I'm round up top. You're round on the bottom. We're open. We're made for each other. We're such a better match than you and seven. And ten is just sitting there like, boom, I'm king. King of the base ten number system. And that is how dyslexics learn how to write numbers. Parents, wouldn't you say it was brilliant? Be sure to share with your children. Now, James, it has been absolutely positively awesome 
chatting with you today. But before we go, now you know we had to share it. <laughs> yes, the crying scene. Oh. Yeah, yes, yes, that crying scene. Now, could you tell us, when did you realize that it, it had become so famous on social media? Early days of Twitter, and I was just on, and somebody would, would tweet, oh, classic at Vander James, which is my Twitter name. Uh-huh. And I'd think, oh, this is some heroic picture of me from Varsity Blues or some really... Yeah. And I would click on it, and it was a three-second loop of me crying. Let's take a look, guys. Go. <laughs> to this day james all right guys well that is it for our first episode i hope that you have found this extremely entertaining i tell you it was fun planning this fun trying to talk to james people and producing it oh well listen th that is all guys thank you so much for tuning in james james darling thank you so much for being a good sport thank you for sharing your wisdom with us please continue to do so because the kids need you and you make sure you stay tuned for our very next video if you watch this and watch it all the way to the end and share it youtube will actually think that i am a good creator and i want Want them to think that so help us out let's spread the news about famous people with dyslexia cindy lumpkin's channel where i don't always act silly but i do share some really important things about special education and issues dealing with those who have issues such as common learning disabilities dyslexia dysgraphia and a host of other things all right peace oh one more thing this is James and Dancing with the Stars.